biggest thrill in the world just by creating an image. And as you can see, these images aren't maybe too complicated. I, I try to get down to basics. I'll talk about that a little bit later. I um, just uh, I remember when I was a young young boy, about 12. Uh, this was in the 1950s. Remember those paint by number things? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My dad got me one of those. My paint by number set was some, a little brook, you know, a little red barn, and trees and things, you know. And uh, I really assiduously addressed that canvas with great seriousness. And I kept thinking, uh, what I would be able to paint if I didn't have numbers? <laughs> to go beyond the numbers and just paint what I wanted to, to paint. And that's when the first thought sort of came along that I could paint whatever I wanted to paint. I didn't have to restrict myself to uh, numbers. But I did finish that painting and I hung it in my bedroom very proudly looked at it for about two weeks and then uh, kind of lost interest in it. I guess. But when I was um, uh, about 18 or so, uh, I decided I wanted to paint very seriously. And I think the thing that turned me around that gave me an idea was this was, I wasn't 18 in 1960, but it was in 1960, January 11th edition of Time Magazine, had a young New York painter, Frank Stella, he was 27 years old at the time. And I'd never seen, I looked at the Time Magazine at three or four of his uh, images, of his paintings. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. And it was just like, it really hit me hard that art is really about idea. You can convey emotional ideas, you can convey feeling, you can convey all types of things through your art. Uh, it doesn't have to just be pictorial. It can be, but it can be more than that. Or different than that. And so I wasn't, didn't feel restricted anymore to one type of painting. Uh, I had a friend in the, this was in the Seattle area. She was a good friend of Peggy Guggenheim's and she was, uh, her name was Zoe Dezan and she was kind of the west coast eyes for Peggy Guggenheim's museum in Venice where she was showing a lot of the uh, uh, modern painters, late modern painters at that time. And I was sitting in her gallery, she was, she was about 80, I thought 24 or 22, <laughs> and uh, she just received a huge portfolio about this thick of paintings by Sam Francis, who's now considered one of the major uh, abstract expressionists. And uh, we untied it and opened it up, and she was tossing out the paintings around on the floor and the table so we could all look at them, just her and I. But uh, she said, uh, I really love this work. I have ever since that experience with her. And she says, you know, one thing you can, and they're very abstract. They're like dribbles, dribbles on paper. And this was a, just a whole new idea, the way he formed uh, images through uh, little drips. Not like Jackson Pollock. These were kind of looser images. And uh, she said, you know, one thing you can tell by looking even at an abstract painter, a painting, a very non-objective painting, is that whether or not the artist has the skill to do figurative drawings and drawings of that sort. And she said it's very, very important because if you can do figurative drawings, if you can do images of, of people and trees, then you can safely handle larger or different non-objective abstract shapes. And she, oh good, I got applause. That's my <laughs> first applause. <laughs> But anyway, so that meant a lot to me too. And so I always like to keep my hand involved in uh, doing that as well.